Welcome to this great little fighter. I want to share with you the experience that I made when I learned to pick this lock. And I also want to deliver the inspiration that I got from it. So I saw this lock laying on a table when I was at the home of one of my co-workers and I asked him whether I could have it for a few days. Yeah, he knows that I'm an enthusiastic lock picker and did not deny my request, thankfully. Um, I don't show you the key at this moment because when I picked it the first time I also didn't pay attention to the bidding. And I want to share with you now um, uh, the process of learning to pick this lock. So only four pins, only standard pins, but you can see it has a very nice paracentric keyway. So there is no straight line from the end of this keyway uh, to the pins. And also this piece of wording doesn't allow to work from this ledge straight. And I decided to work from that piece of wording at a slight angle. And this allows me to insert the tension wrench at the corner here and tension it uh, comfortably. Okay, so what I did first, I applied tension, tested the first pin, which appeared to be springy as you can see, then I reached further uh, I reached further and I felt two binding and I tried to pick it and it was binding really hard. And every time I, I, tr I picked it or I pushed it down or up, um, the lock became, uh, became overset. So every pin felt springy again and I, have to, I had to repeat my, my picking of two and I tried to be more careful every time not to overset when picking it until I finally found out that it actually doesn't need to be picked at all. So I continued with three and it was springy and then I, with four and probably overset um, pins while testing from one through three and finally I found out that I have to pick four first. So insert the pick, apply tension and now you can feel how it stops and then you can try to pick four and pull out your pick and then one is binding and maybe you've seen that the core turned a little bit that tells you that the tolerances are not really great in this lock but it has a great keyway and it has a has great bidding so now three is the next to pick And it's open. Yeah, that's a great little fighter. And now I will show you the the bidding on the on the key. Yeah, you can see that two is a very long key pin. So that's two here. Um, one is very short. Three is also short, and uh, four is even shorter. And the bidding and the, the binding order really fits nicely together. So let me draw you a little uh, sketch here. So we have uh, pin 1, then we have pin 2, and that's the situation when the key is inserted. Here is pin 3 and pin 4 is even shorter. So that's pin 1, 2, 3, 4, and yeah. That's how it looks like without the key. So now you have first to pass uh, pin 2 to pick 4. That's the first binder. Then you have to pull out the pick, uh, hopefully leaving uh, 2 alone um, to pick uh, 1. Then passing 2 again to pick 3, which is a bit, of, uh, which is a bit difficult because you have to um, recognize three behind the the high uh, pin two and not mistaking, mistakenly uh, think that four is actually three, which I probably did uh, quite a few times. And yeah, then it opens. So four uh, pin two doesn't have to be picked at all. Yeah, great binding order, great bidding. Um, but I played 
little bit more with this lock and thought maybe it can be picked in a, in a different way and I experimented with picking it from this corner here and I found that with a very thin uh, pick like this, it's a Sparrow's uh, 0 0.38 millimeters uh, width pick, you can access uh, the pins from this latch. You can see, I can push up pin 1. Um, for tensioning, you could probably use a tension wrench at the pin side, but it uh, tends to turn and then you end up with tensioning it like this and this blocks my view to the pins and I really don't like tensioning it like this. Um, you can tension it then from the uh, from this edge using a Peterson pry bar 1.3 millimeters works but it slips out easily. And you don't want to uh, tension it from here because it eats up uh, the space uh, in this edge and you need all the space to angle it uh, as good as possible. So I ended up in making my own tension wrench. Looks a little bit like a snake. And this fits nicely here in this, uh, in this edge. And I can comfortably hold and tension the lock. So, see how I do this uh, with the camera. You can see. Works nicely, just the lightning a little bit. Yeah, now I have to only apply a little bit of tension because picking the pins with this thin uh, pick um, is, a, is a fine operation, so you cannot apply too much force with this pick uh, at that angle. So, light tension, and let's see what we can do. And if you have the tension quite right, it's a very quick picking. And it's open. Yeah, so that's a really nice lock, a great little fighter. I had a lot of fun um, finding out um, what makes it difficult or interesting to pick. The binding order, the bidding, uh, learned the different methods of uh, picking this lock. Uh, I rarely uh, try to pick it um, uh, at such an angle and applying light tension, but it's, um, yeah, it eliminates the difficultiness of the uh, great bidding. Yeah, it's an option that I have to uh, practice more. Yeah, David, thank you very much for lending me your great little fighter. It was a lot of fun for me. Yeah, everybody else, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Happy picking and bye-bye.